Hey guys, Space Pigo here, and today I'm going to be drawing Garnet from Steven Universe. Um, yeah. So, I decided on this one to, as you can possibly see, not actually sketch it out. And I don't know how evident that is, but um, I'm actually just working straight onto Blender paper, which I've placed on top of my original sketch. And that's because I want to line it in coloured pencils, but I really don't want to have pencil lines or anything there already that would, you know, mess up any any lines or any colours when I was going back in. So yeah. Um, here I'm using, let's see, <laughs> I'm using Indigo Blue and Cadet Blue to blend to make the darkest part of her outfit. And I actually go over this later on with Stormcloud. All of these are pro marker shades, by the way, in case you couldn't tell, which you probably can, because they're all all over the place in frame. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I do that because I didn't really have colours dark enough or to blend to make uh, the right kind of greyish blue, so I figured just putting a grey over the top of blue would probably work reasonably well. Um, I actually started off, and you can't see this partially because I cut it out because my head was in the way, partially because it really didn't work. I tried to blend the indigo blue using my colourless blender, and that was just too much of a colour difference. It really didn't work out, which I should have been prepared for, but I wasn't. So um, I ended up using cadet blue instead. And yeah, this is also kind of new because, I mean, not just because I'm colouring without any actual lines on the paper I'm using, but um, I'm also trying to blend, which isn't something I've done that much before, <laughs> but um, I wanted to try it out because I thought it would be kind of nice and you got to practice and learn at some point, <laughs> so this is me learning to blend with Pro Markers, which I think actually went reasonably well, although I haven't really done that much that you can see really evident blending or anything in. And yeah. But yeah, here I'm just doing the arm and later on I do realise that there should have been some, I guess the skin tone, Garnet skin tone showing here, but I messed up <laughs> and I did all of it in blue so I have to go back and try and fix that later, which could go worse, could have gone better. I mean, ideally I wouldn't have done it, but uh, yeah, so I'm just trying to like basically shade around all the edges of like the solid body parts and where there would be shadows because of the clothes and that's because the idea is the light is coming from above so the darkest areas would be right at the sides. Um, so yeah, I am sorry about my head getting in the way of shot. Um, I'm trying my best to not do that but because I have to have my camera quite far because of the way it zooms, yeah, there you go, <laughs> there's the top of my head. Um, but yeah, because I have to have the camera quite far out, and it because it zooms in when I'm recording video, um, it means that I end up sticking my head in the way. So that's not ideal, but hopefully I'll be able to fix that soonish. Um, I didn't do that much shading on the fingers just because they're teeny tiny and it's really difficult to do. But uh, yeah, and now I've kind of jumped ahead a bit because I lost some of this footage and some of it just gets cut out because my head's in the way. But here I'm using bluebell which might actually not be the same colour now because this is an old pen that I had and I'm shading that again with cadet blue because I haven't really got that many blues and <laughs> it's kind of annoying but uh, yeah here I'm going over all the blue with storm cloud because at this point it was dry enough for it to not just bleed everywhere and for the underneath colours to hold a little bit better which I think you can kind of see once this layer dries. You can see just about that like the shading is still there. <laughs> but yeah. And I am sorry that I ended up skipping through the entirety of like the dress part, but it was just <laughs> it was either not there at all or my head was in the way. So that's that's my bad. <laughs> but yeah. Still just covering everything up with the with the grey to try and get that same colour, which 
I probably should have swatched it out a little bit more to make sure it worked, but I think it actually turns out all right once it all dries a little lighter. Uh, for the pink parts, I'm using Heather, which is actually a violet marker, and Sorbet, and they're both in flex markers. And they're actually quite nice to work with, but like the one problem I do have with the flex markers is they put down a lot of ink and after a while it starts getting too much and I have to use my finger to lift away some of the ink just so that it doesn't get too, like, I guess the way that watercolours form those edges, I don't want that to happen in the middle of my, like, blocks of colours, so you have to take some ink away because it just puts down too much. But um, yeah, the shading on that part didn't come out exactly right, but that's because I didn't really have a good pink to blend with, and yeah. <laughs> um, for the next part, I am using Cloud Blue and Powder Blue. Cloud Blue is slightly darker, it's not like really noticeable, and it's some of the lightest shading I actually have, so <laughs> it's kind of a little bit annoying, but it turns out pretty nice. And again, that part gets cut out just because technology hates me and I keep putting my head in the way. But yeah, now I'm moving on to the pink part, which I believe I used Wild Orchid and Maroon for. Um, yeah, and there's my head again. <laughs> yeah, um, it actually came out with this kind of interesting iridescence to it, I guess. And I think that's because I used a purple and a pink tone, or I guess violet and maroon other technical shades, I assume, from the V and the M on the markers. But yeah, and at this point I realised I hadn't marked in or left blank all of the spaces where she's um, supposed to be pink under the dress, so I had to like just block those in. Luckily they were in shadow so it doesn't look too bad, but uh, yeah. And this is, yeah, that's where I'm doing the pink still. And now I'm using <laughs> burgundy to try and block in that little bit of arm that I missed out on, which was silly. And I'm shading that using plum, which is another violet, but I'm using that with a red shade, which is burgundy. So again, like the effect of the shading is kind of interesting, and I do like the way it turned out. I should have spent more time checking how the colours would react with one another, but um, yeah, <laughs> and things happen. Uh, here I was trying to shade the hand a little bit better because I realised that it was kind of difficult to see where the fingers are, and that's going to make finishing this drawing kind of tough, but uh, yeah, it goes a little bit better on this this hand. and. Yeah, the fingers look a little bit weird, because I'm not great at hands, <laughs> and, you know, it happens, but uh, I think it actually turned out quite nicely, all things considered. The hands are at least a reasonable size, um, and I keep just going over that one patch to try and make it redder, so yeah. Here I'm just making sure I know exactly where the face is, and now I'm doing the neck before I start the face, which I was really worried about messing up, because it's kind of important. But yeah, um, I'm not really sure what else to say, because this is starting to get kind of repetitive. Oh, that's good. I use chili red, I think, yeah, chili red, to kind of try and give the cheeks and the nose a little bit more colour, because I thought that would be nice, and now I'm just putting my face in the way, <laughs> and yeah. It's not ideal, but um, working on details and trying not to mess things up tends to make me move a lot closer to the camera, or to the drawing rather, so my head kind of gets in the way. But um, yeah, I'm just trying to give the face a bit of outline, and now making sure like the lips are standing out enough, the nose is standing out. Basically just trying to like <laughs> mark in where all of the shading around all of the features would be. Um, yeah, and the eyes look really weird and they don't get better in this video, <laughs> I'm very sorry. Um, but yeah, hopefully next week there will be a video of me doing the line art, so it'll look slightly less creepy, but uh, for now this is what you gotta live with. Oh, and that was, oh, what colour was that? I haven't actually got it in front of me. Um, 
silver lining, I think, which is a limited edition pen, but um, I think you can still get them. I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I think from here I move on to the hair. No, I'm waiting for the mouth to dry so that I can darken up the parts that aren't teeth and tongue. Um, yeah, and I actually quite like the way the mouth ends up looking, although the ink does bleed and the teeth pretty much disappear, so I'm gonna have to get those to come back when I'm using my pencils and my highlighting ink pen. What's it called? Uniball. My white uniball. <laughs> um, yeah, and here I have started doing the hair, which is again powder blue and cloud blue. I think. Yeah, that looks like cloud blue. Um, yeah, and I realised that because there's blue on the right side, I guess her left are right, um, it would be, the blue would be right up against the blue of her sleeve as you can see there, so I was like, oh no, <laughs> I've used the same colours and they're right next to each other. So I end up darkening it quite a bit, just layering up the cloud blue to try and get it to stand out a little bit so they don't just blend together, because that wouldn't be good. Um, I don't really blend that much with the hair, I just like let it stay in solid colours I guess, to try and... I don't know, it's just kind of easier <laughs> that way. Especially since I have a lot of trouble with the texture of Garnet's hair. Like, I, I always assume it's meant to be afro style, like that kind of very tightly curled style, but then I'm not that good at rendering that and I don't want to like really mess it up, so I just kind of block in colours, which is kind of a shame really, but yeah, I just have my own skills to work with, so yeah. But yeah, I'm still just going in, darkening up some areas, just trying to give it a little bit more depth, even though it's still kind of flat colours rather than hair texture. But um, yeah. Oh yeah, and for the pink parts of the hair, I think I'm using Sorbet and... Oh gosh, what am I using? Maybe Wild Orchid. I'm actually not 100% sure on that. Ah, oh, I should have written down all the markers I used, I'm really sorry guys. But yeah, and here you can just see the side to side, although there's a little bit of shadow on the coloured side, but you can see the side to side of um, the sketch and the colour, which is kind of fun. And now I'm just doing the gems in her hands, and I use Sorbet again for that, along with Carmine, which is a nice, like, bright neon -y pink, and I also used chili red I think for the darker parts. So yeah, I do use quite a lot of the same colours for some of them, and that's just because I haven't really got a huge range of colours, and also I think it looks kind of nice. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe, <laughs> all that stuff, and yeah, bye!